Realme seems to have waited for Oppo to make the first move because there seem to be a lot of similarities between these earphones and the Air 3 Pro. These are a nice upgrade compared to the Realme Buds Air 3, but their direct competitor is the Air 3 Pro and that is a comparison that's in the works. But for now, let's jump straight into how these earphones are built. Realme's unboxing experience hasn't really changed over all these years, but its unboxing is simple and to the point. Upon opening the box, you'll see the case with the buds in them. Below it, you get a box that holds the literature, small and large ear tips. The mediums are already on the earphones and you get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. The case is still a glossy finish. I was hoping they'd decide to shift over to a matte finish and because they haven't, by the second day I had these, scratches were already showing. The case has a battery indication and sync light in front of it, a USB-C charging point below, a sync and reset button on the right and the Realme branding on the top much like how the Realme Buds Air 3 looked like. Upon opening the case, the layout seems to have changed from the Realme Buds Air 3 in favor of trying to emulate what Oppo's layout is. I'm not a fan of this because of the way they're laid out and designed. I can't seem to get a grip easily to take them out which can get frustrating. If you have smaller fingers, it should be easier to take these out of the case. The case sounds much like the Realme Buds Air 3 case did when closed. Once you're able to take the earphones out of the case, you'll see a very similar looking design compared to the Buds Air 3. But there are in fact a few changes. The contact points for one are placed quite differently and the ear tips now have a meshing on the inside to keep any dirt and debris from clogging the inner meshing. This seems to be a play they've taken straight out of Oppo's book from their earphones. Comfort wise, the ear tips are a nice soft silicone which don't hurt the ear at all. But I do find the driver housing to be a little on the larger side. My left ear starts to feel a little uncomfortable after about 45 minutes of listening time because of the size of these. It hasn't led to pain but feels like it could get there. If you plan on using these for workouts indoors or outdoors, these come with an IPX5 water resistant rating which should be fine for light splashes or drizzles but it's worthwhile wiping the earphones and contact points down before putting them back in the case. On a feature front, these come with Bluetooth version 5.3. They have multi-device pairing. They also have active noise cancelling as well as touch controls. And you also get the Realme Link app support. Within the app, you can see your battery's percentages, your noise control, which you can toggle between smart, max, moderate, and mild. You can choose to have a personalized noise cancellation option, which will let these scan your ear canal for the optimum experience. You can have the noise cancelling off for when you only want to passively cut off from the world. And you can always switch to transparency mode for when you want to let the world in. You can select the enhance voices option for when someone is speaking near or to you and you can also select the wind noise reduction as well and the same can be done when your active noise cancelling is on. You can go into the sound effects section which will let you choose from a few presets or play around with the EQs. I'll speak about this in the chapter about sound. You get a familiar sounding golden sound feature which scans your ear and lets you do a hearing test so it can compensate for any hearing loss you may have. You get spatial audio with a very familiar looking animation I've seen very recently which does enhance your staging when put on. Then you can switch on the high definition sound here for the LDAC codec support. Toggling this switch on will give you a little more control over bass and switching this on will increase your overall volume a little. Below that you can activate the dual device pairing for when you want to connect a computer, second phone or tablet. You can activate game mode here and do a earbud fit test from here. You can go into your button settings to customize your inputs here and by default your settings for the left bud is double tap for play and pause, triple tap for next track, touch and hold for switching between noise control modes. And the right bud has the same controls. You can customize these by clicking on the arrow next to each command and select anything from having to activate a voice assistant to increasing or reducing your media volume or even activating your game mode. What I find quite odd is that there's no single tap gesture with these earphones, but I do like that you can switch off in your detection. The multi-device pairing works pretty seamlessly. Now by multi-device, it can connect to two devices simultaneously and it works fairly flawlessly. But the only issue I found with it is when you're playing audio from two devices, it will only play from the primary device. But when you press play on the secondary device, it doesn't auto pause and hand over. You will have to pause your media on the primary device. Only then will, it ha will the second device start playing your audio. If by any chance you've been listening to the LDAC codec for high resolution audio and you switch on the multi-device pairing, uh, while connected to both devices and while you're listening to media, there are terrific connectivity drop-offs. It keeps cutting every half a second or every two seconds. It's unable to keep up. So uh, I'm a bit surprised that they didn't have an auto LDAC switch off and hand over to the AAC codec. 
uh, but this is something you'll have to keep in mind if you do experience this you will have to toggle your LDAC codec off the game mode button isn't something I thought I'd toggle on and off because with it off anyway there isn't too much of a delay it does pretty well but if you do want better latency you will have to switch it on and once you switch on the game mode you have a very respectable 40 millisecond response time which I think is the quickest response time I've experienced on any TWS earphones but of course if you want absolutely no lag or latency at all you know you'll be better off with uh, wired earphones or headphones but instead of me going on and telling you how my experience has been with the latency let me show you a quick demo for how this would perform with the game mode off and on with games as well as videos. Codecs supported are SBC and AAC. These earphones come with a 10 mm driver, so I still don't know why the housing is as large as it is. Wind cancelling technology that they're trying, that could explain the size. On a volume front, these are more than comfortable to listen to between 30 and 50 percent. I remember I reviewed a set of Oppo Enco W31s which had a matte uh, finish case, and that is still going strong. It's still in pretty good condition, it doesn't look as bad as a case that would have been glossy. When it comes to its active noise cancelling, Realme claims that it can reduce noises up to 50 decibels. Now, I don't doubt that at all because it does a very good job of that. Uh, if you want to knock off engine droning noises, fan motor noises, AC motor noises, it does a very good job of that. But the one issue I did notice is that when I do have the ANC on, I can hear the whooshing of my fan blades, but it's very soft and in the distance. It's not really a sound of wind hitting the microphone. It's just the sound of the air coming off the blades from a distance. Now, it's at a very soft volume, so I'm being very picky about this. But if you are listening to music, there's no way you're going to be able to hear this. Realme has decided to use three microphones per earphone, which is an upgrade compared to the previous Realme Buds Air 3. So this definitely does a good job with the active noise cancelling. But those same microphones also contribute towards the environmental noise cancelling for whenever you want to be on a phone call. So your voice should technically carry over much better than it would with the previous generation. So uh, if you do want to see how your voice would carry over to your recipient, there's really only one way to find out. I'm calling from the usual busy street. I do all of my call tests from just a quick sense of the amount of noise that these earphones are going to be battling and I've got high hopes for these because the previous generation, the Burt's Air 3, weren't exactly very good for calls whereas these have three microphones per ear but give you a total of six. So uh, as you can see, there's a whole lot of two-wheelers, four-wheelers. You might get the occasional pressure on from some tankers going across on this road behind me. And of course, there is some construction work going on behind me as well. So I have been on the camera microphone all this time and I'll switch over to the Air 5 Pro microphone right about now. So uh, no doubt this has got a lot that it's going to be dealing with. So uh, I, I do hope in fact that this does do a better job than the uh, Air 3 uh, because a lot of people had that specific gripe with those set of earphones. So one thing I do with uh, these call tests in my in-depth reviews is I go on over to the app and switch over between all the noise cancelling uh, modes because this can put a certain pressure on the algorithm because there is a shift and of course it's dealing with all of this noise plus the active noise cancelling. So let's check and see if there is a shift in my voice when I'm talking to you because you of course are sitting in the reviewer seat. So I am in the noise cancelling mode right now in the maximum setting. I'll move it over to moderate now. It's just give me an acknowledgement beep that it's shifted over to moderate. So uh, this is uh, pretty much how it will sound. I don't know from where I'm standing if there's been a shift over in what you are hearing in the tonal quality in my voice. So right now I'll shift over from moderate to mild. It's just beep to let me know it's shifted over. So I can hear a little more of the noise coming in uh, when it comes to the active noise cancelling, which by the way is actually pretty good. It, it handles this uh, pretty well. 
and I'll move over to the smart. And I think when it's over to the smart, it just go on the maximum mode because of the amount of noise that is behind me. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll shift over back to the maximum mode because uh, I find that more comfortable here. Uh, and I'll switch over to the transparency mode right about now. So it's letting in a lot more noise. I can hear, I can hear a lot more noise coming in. I'm hoping nobody blows the pressure on because that'll be quite unpleasant. Uh, and I'll switch over to off now. So now everything is passively isolated. So I can hear things bleeding in. And of course, I do prefer the noise cancelling on max, which I'll go back to right about now. So uh, uh, you are sitting in the reviewer seat. So you, you're in a perfect position to see whether or not this kind of tonal quality is perfect. Because this is how your voice is going to be carried over to your recipient. And I do hope that this demo has given you a better understanding of these earphones. And I will see you back at the studio. These come with not one but two drivers within the enclosure. One is an 11mm dynamic driver which handles the lower frequencies and mid-range and the other is a 6mm microplanar tweeter driver which only handles the higher frequencies. These can support SVC, AAC and LDAC codecs and have a frequency response of as low as 20Hz all the way up to 40,000 hertz. On a volume front, these are more than comfortable to listen to at 40 to 50%. Now, you do get a volume enhancer if you want to switch it on. Now, with the volume enhancer on, 30% volume is, is perfectly fine. You, you don't really need to go more than that because it gets a little too loud. In fact, with the volume enhancer on, I wouldn't recommend going beyond 50% for prolonged periods of time if you want to preserve your hearing. When it comes to listening to these at lower volumes, lower than 25%, these tend to thin out a lot. And usually what happens is you, uh, the lower volumes you lose bass and higher frequencies but this manages to maintain the bass and highs to a certain extent there is a massive drop off with the mid range in particular so it starts to sound a lot more hollow so uh, if you go lower in volume these aren't going to sound as balanced as you'd like when it comes to its sound stage it performs very similarly to most other TWS earphones with your stage existing with the bubble in your head uh, you do have a good center phantom channel and it has good left and right separation you will get the illusion of some tones coming from further out of the earphones but this happens very rarely. This does get spatial audio. In fact, when you go into the app and look at the animation, I'm pretty sure this animation is almost the same or it is the same as the one in the Oppo app. But uh, anyway, that's uh, it's one more step of them trying to emulate uh, what Oppo has done. But uh, with the spatial audio, when you switch it on, there is a boost in the volume and there is an added expanse to your audio. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people will use this primarily for gaming and movie watching because it is a lot more immersive with this on. Imaging on these is pretty standard for a set of TWS earphones. Now don't expect audiophile levels of quality from this, but you are able to zone into certain nuances uh, there is decent vocal and instrument separation as well. If you've been listening to the LDAC codec with a high res source as well, you will get used to the finer details in your music. But if you shift over to the AAC and SBC codecs, you will be able to tell that it does get slightly fuzzier in detail. High frequencies are slightly elevated with these, but thanks to that little micro planar tweeter, it is delivered to you in a very smooth and effortless manner. As nice sounding as the highs are being handled by this driver, there's a range that they've gone a little overboard with because it can tend to pierce or hurt the ear when it exists in your music. It seems to be coming from the upper high frequency range from cymbals or chimes, which is a little too accentuated for my taste. Frequencies lower down in the highs are smoother and enjoyable in this range. And these don't sound metallic as I remember the Realme Buds Air 3 being. Listening to Coldplay's Adventure of a Lifetime, the percussion, cymbals and anything that shimmers comes through clearly without aggression except for a sliver of the high frequencies that sound a little too boosted. This range doesn't come through in all music except for when it's more acoustic music with more natural tones. Mid frequencies are recessed a bit, but it remains forward enough to be able to hear lyrics quite clearly. I'm surprised the lower mid range isn't pulled too far back with these because a lot of manufacturers have been doing this. So thanks to this, vocals do tend to sound more natural. Female and male vocals are rounded and not nasal sounding. There's good separation between instruments and vocals, but don't expect audiophile levels of separation here. Listening to Adele's Send My Love, her vocals are usually thinned out with most TWS earphones, but not with these. Her voice has good body as well as the background vocals. This is a very nice welcome from Realme, which I wasn't expecting. 
Low frequencies are elevated, so it's great if you want a little more thump in your bass for heavier sounding music. This range is boosted more than enough when you're listening to these in their original audio preset, and I haven't felt the need to have any more bass than it produces, but I can see EDM lovers wanting to play around with the EQs to boost this range even more. It does manage to carry over sub bass over to you as well in a strong manner, which makes these enjoyable if you plan on watching action movies when on the move. I do however wish this range was a little bit tighter. It can give a sense of not having proper structure with bass sounding a bit loose at times. Listening to Dr. Rocket's Cafe de Flore, the bass in this track is the main theme here and this does remain enjoyable to listen to with how well it's able to carry these frequencies over to you without hindering the mid-range, but it does lack the tightness I wish it had for a nice recording like this. I've tested these in their original sound mode with EQs off, dynamic bass off as well as the volume enhancer off, but if you do want to tweak your audio, there are a few things you can do. If you go into your sound effects section within the app, you can choose between a few presets which are Serenade, which is a little more treble happy than the original sound mode. Switching over to the original sound opens up the bass a little more as if almost giving you more of a natural sound. Then pure bass elevates the bass without touching the mids and highs much. This does introduce bloat into your bass which some people might find enjoyable and pure bass is on the obnoxious side of being bass boosted. If you've ever heard a car driving by with loud bass and windows rattling, this mode is exactly that. Then you can also tweak your audio with the equalizer which has 6 bands of control and lets you play around with a plus minus 6 dB gain and it's fairly easy to use. And then you can use golden sound which conducts a scan and hearing test for you to personalize your audio to compensate for any hearing loss you might have making your setting quite personalized. Then you can use dynamic bass to cull the bass or have it enunciate even more. I prefer dialing the bass in with this rather than the presets it has. This does give you better control here. So to sum up, on a build front, if you are a regular watcher of my channel, you know that I really dislike the whole glossy finish and uh, the glossy finish on this uh, case really drives what I'm saying home because I think I had this just for maybe one or two days until I realized it started showing scratches already. Glossy is not the way to go. In fact, the finish they've used on the earphone stems has a beautiful matte uh, beige finish. They could have just carried over the same finish over to the case because they are capable of making a finish like this. They, they should have ideally done that. It would have felt a lot more premium. It would have shown a lot less scratches uh, over time. Glossy cases just look very old within a matter of a few months if they're not in a case. I really don't like the fact that they've changed the placement of the earphones. The placement of the Realme Buds Air 3 was spot on because these are slippery earphones and whenever I try to pull out the Realme Buds Air 3, I couldn't because uh, I have maybe slightly larger fingers and the earphones are slippery. But because the ear tips are on the side, I could grab onto the ear tips and pluck those out. These earphones in particular, they've tried to replicate what Oppo's done. And because the earphones are turned inward, you can't really reach for the ear tips because the case lid is in the way. So every time I try to grab it from the stem or from the, the enclosure, my fingers keep slipping. The Realme Buds Air uh, 3 worked. Uh, there was no need to uh, fix what wasn't broken. I really don't know why they've done this because there are a few other things that they've done to emulate what Oppo has done, which is quite unnecessary. What I do like uh, that they've copied from Oppo is they've put a little meshing within the ear tip. In fact, I think I first noticed this on the Oppo Enco Air 2 Pro because uh, this helps uh, prevent ear wax or debris from going and blocking the inner mesh of the earphones because cleaning that can be a bit of a pain. So this is a nice welcome. It is a nice touch. I think most uh, uh, companies should consider doing something like this uh, because it will protect your earphones in the long run. On a feature front, these are absolutely loaded. I think the only thing they don't have is wireless charging because they've got absolutely everything else that's modern and current in the market. Connectivity issue wise, I have noticed this has a bit of an issue because whenever I'm on the LDAC and I'm listening to high-res audio, it sometimes does have a random cutoff. Now that cutoff is not very regular. It might happen in five minutes. It might happen in 10 minutes. It might happen in half an hour, but it does have random cutoffs when in LDAC mode. Uh, when I'm in, well, I'm using the LDAC codec. When I'm using the AAC codec or SBC codec, it's smooth sailing. There's absolutely no issue. It, there's no connectivity issue at all. And where I did notice a massive connectivity issue is when you're using the LDAC codec as well as the dual device connectivity because when you're connected to two devices and using LDAC, uh, there's too much uh, transmission going on. It, it doesn't know what's going on. So it's cutting every half a uh, second or every two seconds. It's unable to do this. So now what I have noticed with other earphones, what they do is 
if they are using a higher bitrate or a, a more load heavy codec, the minute you say uh, you wanted to use dual device connectivity, it auto hands over to the AAC codec. This doesn't do that. So maybe they might address this in a software update in the future. Another thing I found funny was they called it Golden Sound or Spatial Audio. I think these are the same names that Oppo uses within the Hame LED app uh, for, their, for their earphones. So there was no need to replicate the names as well. It's I know you're competing with them, but anyway, it's, uh, it's at least something familiar, especially if you're moving from an Oppo to a Realme, you'll know what these things are. So I can see the benefit of it. On a sound front, well, very surprisingly, I found myself liking these. Now, I don't love them, but I do like them in the sense, uh, when I tested the Realme Bud 3, I was on the fence about it because on first impressions, those earphones sound very good. But then the more you listen to them, they sounded very metallic. This in particular does not come into that threshold where it's too brittle or it's too sharp or it's metallic. It's much softer in its overall delivery, except for that little spike it's got. I think it's happening somewhere between the 10,000 and 12,000 kilohertz region because there's a, a, a spike somewhere there that is a little too bright uh, for my taste. So uh, you can go into the EQ settings and sort of down tune certain frequencies if they're too bright or too shrill or sharp for you. The EQ, it works pretty well, it's pretty effortless. But overall on the sound front, uh, they've got a lot of things you can do. But primarily their focus seems to be more bass oriented because every uh, preset you go to just seems to pump up the bass that much more. And then you've got that dynamic bass uh, controller, which is again bass control. Uh, and then the volume enhancer is of course loudness. So these are catering towards loudness. These are catering towards uh, a heaviness in bass. Uh, despite having LDAC, I, I don't think these are the best sounding wireless earphones I've heard that uh, handle LDAC. I think I've heard other earphones that carry more detail than these, but I'd really have to do a back-to-back -back comparison uh, between all of these earphones before knowing for absolutely certain. But all in all, these earphones are screaming to want to be uh, in the pocket of somebody who likes uh, electronic dance music. They, these want uh, a heavy bass being played to them. These want uh, loudness uh, being broadcast into them. So overall, these earphones are an impressive little set of earphones. I'm very surprised that Realme of all people has incorporated a tiny little planar driver into these. That is quite impressive. Uh, and um, usually when you have two drivers, there is an issue with a roll off between what frequency is the high frequency driver is doing and the, the low frequency driver. But it seems kind of seamless. There isn't a sudden drop off in the highs and then a, a drop off in the mids and then it carries on. It seems to merge uh, fairly smoothly. So uh, they have done a pretty good job with this. And I'd say overall, considering all of its features, its, well, it's build quality, I don't like the glossy, but that and the way it sounds, uh, I'd say these are value for money. Uh, and speaking about the, the cost, in fact, uh, at the time of recording this video, uh, these are going for, they have a maximum retail price of about 7,999 and they have a selling price of about 4,999. So are these value for money? Well, I'd say if you are a Realme loyalist, if you've only been picking up Realme products, uh, light is gone. Anyway, if you are a Realme loyalist and you've uh, been using Realme phones or Realme earphones and you really like their products in general, I say this, this does make sense uh, to go for uh, because uh, it does a lot of things and it, it does them fine. It's not uh, it's not bad and it's not the best at the same time. Uh, it is a nice looking set of earphones uh, and at the same time, the way it sounds is not offensive. The one thing that I found really impressive is its latency because for gaming, I think it's it's pretty good. Uh, 40 millisecond response time for latency is actually quite superb. In fact, a lot of these wireless earphones are coming closer and closer each year to uh, the latency period of uh, what a wired set of earphones or headphones would be. It's getting to the point where you won't be able to differentiate. I mean, we're not there yet, but we are getting there. And uh, this is really a terrific set of earphones that way. So yes, I would recommend these. So I do hope that you found this video helpful and informative. And I hope I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision. If you would like to support the channel, I'm sure you know exactly how to. But of course, thank you for tuning to Paul's POV for some sound advice.